morning, everyone. So, I'm, uh, I'm gonna make some maps. Um, I had an idea for a map I wanted to make in Halo. So, I'm currently here in this map here called Depths, which is an underwater map. But the primary reason I want to use this map is because it is insanely flat. So, I'll be able to make a complete map without needing to worry about flattening the terrain. Uh, there are other maps like this, especially um, <clears throat> especially Riptide, which is a surface-based one, but it has a death barrier, so I can't use that one. This is pretty much just underground, so... Um, this is on Halo 5 Forge, which is the PC version of Halo 5, uh, just the Forge mode, though. Um, you can make custom lobbies and all that. But this is my first time using the um, using the Forge map, or using the Forge program to make to make an app. So, for the most part, I'm just going to learn how to use this program first, and then I'll get back to you on that. So, object library is here. We're going to start with. Floor. settings. I believe I can... There we go, object properties. So I'll be able to change its physics, if it's locked or not. Make a boundary if I need to. So, let's see what we got. I can change its material, too. So I'm gonna make this... I can make it an emissive. Hey, Chivo. Okay. I'm gonna turn down the music real quick. Just a touch so I can listen to myself here. should do. We can also turn down the metallic form of this to make it more solid. And then we can add a bit of a oof, we can add a bit of a concrete look to it. There we go. Let me just land on here. This is a simple floor. You can actually use this to our advantage, though, because now we have a a base of what a large building should look like and feel. We don't want to completely remove from these walls here. So we don't want to remove the movement feel of this area. So definitely understanding just how much space is going to be needed is important. Go to structures, walls. We need a... Uh, we need a 64 by 64. Simple. Yeah. Okay. I want to make this match. That should do. Okay, now if we do Control D, we can duplicate this. Now we just need to match this a little bit. Okay. 
Okay. There we go. This is pretty much match to match. So, now we're gonna group these. Uh, hold. Take that. Yeah, now group. And duplicate. There we go. Easy as can be. This is actually a lot easier than using the Xbox One version. Um, no bragging on the Xbox One version. It's got a surprisingly concise map making tool set, but this is just a lot easier to put pieces together. As someone who's made a map in Halo 5 before, not a whole lot of success. Okay, that should be about the same. Check for... Yep, yeah, that's about the same. Now I gotta rotate this. Okay, snap this to. Oh, that's snapping. Ah, I see, that's for moving precisely. Okay. Take it. Snap to. I freeze. That'll allow me to do more precise stuff now that I've seen it. Good. So good. Okay, we can actually afford to bring this over a bit. So the links cross, I believe. but nothing we can't handle. Okay. So, I'm gonna basically turn this into a house, um, and I'm gonna make stairs leading up to a second floor. Uh, the goal is to try to make kind of a... Uh, kind of a street-style look to it, where the whole area is kind of just this junction of houses, kind of like a mini mall, I guess, is a good way of explaining it. So that's our current goal. First things first, we need to change this to be concrete. Oops. No. I think I can actually change the world design to map options. Here we go. Um, I want... Filter. Already underwater, so we don't need that filter twice. There we go. Add bubbles. I actually want moats. I, I want some sort of feel that nothing is quite. So I'll have moats on medium. 
now, anytime we explore the map, we're gonna have these moats flying around a little bit. Make it seem kind of surreal. I believe there was a way to change style of map because like you can change it to be like day or night in some maps artistic fog yeah you can also add a bit of fog in here if you want to cloud shadows blotchy yeah. i'm gonna add a bit of i can actually just type in the value wind override no. Actually, I think I can do that. Yeah. A bit too fast. Good looking actually. Proud of that. Size this a touch. Okay, <clears throat> I think I had twenty four. Windows clear. So we're actually going to recolor these later. Now if I snap this down to point 0.1, we'll be able to do much more precise movements on this one. Make it much cleaner. bit of a perfectionist when it comes to just laying stuff out like this. It can clip in just a touch to make things a little safer. Okay. Now to do this. That should be perfect-ish. I'm gonna make room for a door. So. Yeah, perfect. I need doors. Ports, glass, accents.
<clears throat> it's just going to look a bit wonky for a while. We'll fix that later. Did it. Okay. I think I need a 32. Maybe a 48. Good. So basically, the goal here is to make a big team battle map. Um, currently, we aren't. We only have maybe one room done, and we haven't even furnished it yet. So now we have to start working on the outer the outer works. So thankfully I can actually ungroup these. Delete this wall. Wait. Delete this wall. Because that's no longer needed. And I can actually bring this map, this stuff forward a touch. So that I can do this. Now we actually can work on this more. And because of how this is, I can 
delete this entire group. Basically, always build more than you need just in case, and then you can just trim it down later. Uh, the same works with uh, clay, really. You work with a lot, and then you just whittle it down. If you make a mistake and need to add more, then you can add more later. Right now, this is a very clean... style of thing. So I'm actually going to set all this stuff to gray. And then set it to concrete. Turn up the concrete mat look. There we go. Now we have a very smooth looking concrete look to it, minus this wall here. And of course, minus some of the inner details, we now have a functioning room that we can work with. Let's get a roof on this. Bearing in mind this is a stall pretty much. So we can actually get rid of this floor here and start filling it in here to get rid of this terrain. So I'm going to do that now before we work on the roof because once we're done with the floor, I can just copy and paste it on the top as well. Save some, save some time. So, fours. Let's do 96. How's that? It's a bit large. <clears throat> so, we'll just do 64 by 64. Should be a perfect fit. Okay, how does it look on the other side? It's the same. Okay. Here. Okay. that look in here. Mm. I can make this work. I can make this work. So it's a touch of refinement. There's that bump. I don't want that bump. We'll keep dropping this until it works. Okay, that's perfect. Bump here, though. That's a problem. I'll work on that. The fact that we have a flat floor, though, is perfect. Can't really tell up close, too, which is awesome. Okay, now we need all gray. Gotta make this concrete as well. Don't 
that. Perfect. Looks like a legitimate storefront now. Okay. Let's work on ironing out this problem here. Thankfully we have something called slopes. We just take one of these, put it in carefully, turn off the snap, and we're only dealing with 5 degrees, and gently adjust it so it just barely nudges. And then all we need to do is make some small refinements. Now we have just that tiny nudge there. But again, we can fix that. So all we need to do now is bring it that way. Okay, no goop. of adjustment, but should be good now. This way. Somehow we got two of these songs in a row. Huh. Do what we intended to do earlier. Uh, duplicate. Lift. Now we have a room. So, the idea I have right now is to. Turn this into one mat minor section. So there's this room here, and I'm gonna split it off into two store storefronts. So one this way, and then the other this way. And um, then what I have planned is to just make it go upwards. I don't know how to make that happen though, so we'll, we'll get to that. get very plain walls. Simple wall. I 
get simple floors, actually. I mean, we can get those, so... looking at the pieces real quick to try to find something that'll work. <clears throat> did I turn on did I turn on shuffle on this thing? I did not. Okay that explains it. Shuffle. There. Please. Okay. That's curious. Okay. Then this will be our level budget. Don't want to seep this into the building here, so I've got to be careful on that. start off very slow very careful did I forget a wall okay fixed and duplicate is amazing Turn this into something. Nope, do not want to blind people. Give it a shellac overlay. To make it look more like a distinct road. So this is gonna be our plaza here. So now we actually get to the fun part, which is building the environment. Because we built a basic house. We built a basic box with which to do something with later, but right now, I need to remove the delay on stream. Just realized that. There, hopefully that fixes it. So, now we have a box, we're gonna build a plaza. So first things first, and reach into the walls section. Get very short walls.
so I'm actually going to group this. Uh, group. Now I'm gonna set this to a wooden color. That looks good. I'll let this play. I don't have a whole lot of songs in this playlist to differentiate. Okay, so now we have wood. Now we're gonna flip it. There we go. So now it looks more like a solid wood structure. I need to make this blend in a little bit more. He's ready for some weeb step. <laughs> Sorry. I only had like 30 minutes to find a decisive soundtrack. Obviously, I just picked stuff that I could find. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time actually arranging this. In case you thought that this stream was gonna be sleep inducing. My sound, my playlist says otherwise. done. I'm going to just get it real quick. Okay, now we're going to add in some environment. I'm going to use some grass. I actually need more grass than that. add this into our little piece of terrain here. Um, I think I can actually make this work a bit better by flipping around. Basically we're just adding in a chunk of terrain into this. And I can combo it in, make it look very succinct. Carefully. So we get this little planter box. Now it's a flat piece of terrain that we can walk on. And now we're going to turn it into an actual planter box. We're going to fill it full of flowers all sorts of really nice things. So I'm going to need plants. Add in some bushes. <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> I'm gonna turn down the snap here so I can really arrange this to make it look a bit different. Do that. See, we're already adding some life into our little world here. Stuff. Let's add some grass. That's a bit too thick. This is alpine tidal. I need. Actually, no, that would be le legit grass, though. Um, that's, yeah, that's way too much grass. So I'm gonna grab some small tufts of grass actually move it around automatically. I'm going to move it down into the ground a little bit to reduce the thickness. And I'm going to rotate it a bit so that it doesn't match. So, do it again. actually. to get some done here. The problem with the 32 by 32 stuff is that it looks way too blocky. So I'm making grass look more natural in terms of its growth by doing minor rotations. Duplicating it in a very odd pattern, so that there is a little bit of overgrowth patches in some areas, without completely taking away from the look of grass in this area. So I'm actually going to group this, so I can just do it multiple times, so I can just get to work immediately. Okay, so now I do a full rotation on this, instead of just rotations of singles. Okay, so now we have like most of this grass done. I'm gonna notice stuff's floating. I don't want that. Bring it down a bit, so it doesn't float. It's alright to let your grass float from time to time, um, but only if it's blending in with stuff that isn't. Like, it's very firmly planted in the ground. We're gonna stop with the grass for a little bit and get a tree. A very old, lush tree. Let's get an Asatia tree here. 
perfect. Okay. Actually gonna bring this down at the ground a bit. And gonna rotate it. Actually get to work on making this tree very lush all around. So I'm actually going to dupe this entire set. Move it around. This overlacing here is actually going to help a lot with this. Okay, now we're just going to turn this around a bit so that there's a bit of a bald patch. We don't want the tree to clip with any of the grass because then it's going to look very weird. of grass that we made and move them around a touch so that we can actually fill in some of these bald spots. very good. Okay, now I'm just going to start adding in much thicker grass by keeping the height high. So it looks like this hasn't been managed in a very long while. down. Now we have this very lush planter box style. Okay, no clipping with the planter box either, which is fantastic. Okay, now we're gonna add stuff other than grass. We're gonna add some flowers. We're gonna add some flowers, a bit of ivy, maybe some aloe. We're just gonna add in some 
some pretty. So we're gonna add in. We're gonna add in flowers. <clears throat> we're gonna make our own special flower with this too. Just by turning it around like this. look natural. Some flowers were meant to look like this. Everything has a purpose. Add that there. Near my house there's this really nice flower uh, that grows all around this one tree I have. And it almost looks like it wraps around the tree a little bit. Um, but it's not like this really aggressive growth. It's just kind of this platonic relationship between them. It's very pretty, uh, especially during spring. going to add that into this. These harebells are really nice looking. And we're actually just going to put these in very carefully around this tree. And we're going to do it a couple times. So that we can increase the amount near this tree. It's a very beautiful tree that has a lot of friends. You know? Look at that. You can't really see it behind all the grass, but it's there, and you know it's there, which is really important. So now we're going to add in some more Zen stuff. We're going to add in a couple of small rocks. Very, very small rocks. That's a flat rock. You don't need that. We need actual rocks here. this with our current planter setup. We're really careful. We'll do that. And we'll drop it down. Nothing is perfect. You can make it as perfect as you want though. And we'll have this. It's a very natural look. See little tinges of blue in there. Now we can add in a couple more tiny rocks. If we look carefully. Very nice rock pattern going on. Okay. Now let's add in some light arrangements to really focus on this.
we need cops. Where would you like to be? Science. Don't need bodies, that'd be creepy. Structures. Extras, you know. Light fixture. Okay, now we're gonna flatten this. Flip it over. Oops. There we go. See how that light looks. We're gonna set it up to. We're actually gonna set it up to be a, a flood light. We're gonna set it up so it matches the entire setup here. Notice how it's a bit uneven. We're gonna flip it over five degrees so it spotlights our tree. So now that light's gonna go up that way. Now we're gonna go here, change it to match. It's a very lovely thing. We're gonna keep this as a white light though. Or a very faint yellow light. I'm actually gonna make this that. Okay. Now if we do point light, you notice how the light suddenly shifts and focuses. And we now have this beautiful arrangement going on here. We're gonna make this a very dim pale yellow to match that of a uh... actually no we're gonna make this an eggshell to make this look natural and we're gonna make this a very dim lens flare so that oops we just go here now we have a direct light going this way Now we're just going to do that again on all sides to make it more direct. Okay, first thing is I'm actually going to decrease that falloff ratio, reduce the brightness, touch, make it a dynamic. Okay, now we're good to go. Duplicate. That's actually, I'm actually glad I caught that. Let's make that go away. They're not overlapping either, that's still really good. Okay, back to work. You gotta be very careful with dynamic lights because they can cause performance issues. But sometimes you gotta take that risk. So you can make some amazing stuff if you take the right risks. Look at that, a fully illuminated tree. Very beautiful, and we can still actually make this work in our favor because now we have a an operating section that players can hide behind with a crouch. 
they can manage, I'm pretty sure, with our dash, our Spartan dash. We can make it safely across sides and be able to take advantage of this rock cover. Overall, it's a very clean way to make this work in our favor. And it looks fantastic as well. So. Now on to the other matter at hand, which is making this the vertical map I had planned. We're going to start filling out this building first, since now we have a centerpiece. We need to make this map a very vertical map. We're going to have ground floor, we're going to have mid areas that allow you to get from top to bottom and bottom to top easily. Um, but we're going to need to make this a town. So even though this is underwater technically, this is mostly for mood lighting purposes to make it look like very overcast. And we're going to add in our own special lighting to make this look like more of a dawn of a new day kind of thing, where it looks very dark, but it looks like the sun's about to rise. That's what the point of playing in depths was. So real quick, we're going to get to work on expanding our house. So first things first, I'm going to copy everything here and group it. <clears throat> so just in case something happens, we'll have the whole thing. Okay, so first things first, when you run into here, you're gonna be looking for covers and all sorts of other things. These windows are obviously gonna make sure that there is no camping going on, but we're gonna add cover, because you can't shoot through the window. But obviously, if you run in, you should be able to have a way to counteract and know information. So, we're going to make this an actual house with apartments. More specifically, the lobby of a hotel. So, when you walk in, there's obviously going to be a side area here for lounging. And then here we're going to make a counter area with a back room. And in the right here is maintenance, basically. So that's what I imagine the first floor looking like. So we're going to start with the obvious thing, which is making a counter. We're going to make platforms. No, not platforms. We need barriers. Which is what we want. That's a real- okay, that's way too large. <laughs> Let's try something else. Let's just do a wall with uh, uh, it's simple. Okay. Accents. currently looking for something that we can use as something that we can use as a counter. Actually, I can just get primitives. Simple, simple primitives. Primitives are basically blocks. Stuff that we can use to make counters. Just like so. Now, obviously, counters aren't just like this. You don't walk into a hotel and see that. It's not like Legend of Zelda. There's not just a single dude there to counter. We're 
we're going to expand this counter. By flipping it this way. I think I accidentally got that perfect. Wow, that's actually really close to perfect. It's probably like 0 0.1 off. Okay. Now the good thing about primitives is that you don't need to really worry about matching things up because they already sync very well together. Don't mind the texture clipping here, that's because they're on the exact same coordinate. You can reduce it by just doing that. And then we see here. Okay, now this is going to merge entirely here. Actually, we don't need it that long. So this looks like a countertop. That hasn't fully merged. There we go. So now we actually have a functioning countertop. We can hide behind it naturally. We have this section here. Now for now for effect, we're just going to bring this out and make a tiny counter in the back for receipt purposes. So we can have certain objects back here. And now, with all that done, we can make a wall and start working on the um, side area here. Because, bearing in mind, no hotel looks like this. So we're going to have to decorate it. Obviously, we're going to start with the rooms specifically a restroom. So let's grab a wall. I'm going to need width. With 32, I'd say. 24. We, need, we don't need detail, we need simple. a bit. Now, this is starting to look more like a building, now that we're actually getting the construction done. Obviously, the window might need to go, all depending. We might have to make the window smaller, but the point being is that we'll be able to easily clear this counter and give flanking room for anybody who wishes to stay in this area for too long. Obviously, when you go outside, there's this beautiful dynamic light going on. So, everything's looking really good right now. So... Let's begin with some prefabs. Well, not prefabs. We're gonna add some structure to this. Uh, we're going to go to props, and we're going to look for anything. So, let's look for urban, window facades, one side window, okay. Good to know. Um, we're going to do a double seat here. Because this is more like a waiting room. 
Now, the interesting thing about this object is that it has collision. So we're going to have to be very careful with planting this down because obviously this is not going to work quite right. Unless we set it to merge. Physics based. We're going to plant this down into the ground a bit. And obviously we're going to set the rotation to zero for everything so it looks flat. Now we're just gonna now we're just gonna match this a bit. Now obviously things are meant to change. I'm suddenly having a great idea right now, uh, which is to turn this into a cafe. <laughs> so I'm gonna turn this into a cafe. <laughs> so we're gonna have some booth chairs, some booth seats here, and a duke here. And thankfully, the cool thing about this is that I can just follow the position and rotation of this to get it as close as possible. And then I can rotate. That's why I love the X coordinates stuff down here, is that I can easily make this work. Now, obviously, it's on a similar coordinate. Y, so I don't need to worry about that. So I'm going to do this, and then hopefully there is a table in here. Urban, construction, here we go. Seats, gates, vending. Okay, vending machines. Perfect. I can make that work. Shop gate. Ah, that's actually a good thing to know about. I'm actually going to save real quick before I forget. Okay. Billboards? Yeah, we're going to add one of those in later, too. Because <clears throat> I have an idea for that. Okay.
with table. Obviously, we can have a little bit of stuff spilling off like that. That decal should not be doing that. That looks good. drop this down so that there's primarily clutter on the ground here. There we go. See, that looks... This is looking a lot nicer. I say nicer in a general sense. I mean that this place is looking great. Okay, now let's go outside and start setting up for one other big thing. Which is... Dumpsters. I noticed dumpsters, and the one thing I wanted to add in was that we're actually dumpsters. So we're going to add in a few dumpsters to this section. Move it to the back area. And then we're just going to dupe it here. And then we're going to compound it with some trash piles. this phase so it matches a little bit nicer. Okay, and again, adding a bit of life to this by just adding in some clutter. That's the big deal. Okay, phased, and phased. I'm going to set this all to zero. going to rotate this so it doesn't look like the same clutter. There we go. Now then, we're going to add in some more of those decals. I don't want urban, I want trash. We're going to add in a big pile here. Oops. Trash decals. Where have you been? Searching all along. Some twilight on Are these floating? Without a bit. A bit. Without a sign. Bring those down a touch. There we go. Where have I been? That looks great. Again, it's all about adding in detail. So, now what? Let's actually work on the cafe a bit. Because obviously we have a bit of work to do here. First things first, gotta make everything match area. So, I'm going to make this all gray. Actually, no, I don't have to, because it's wood. If I change it to wood. Yep. 
Just to avoid texture clipping, I'm gonna make this one bit sideways. So it stops clipping like that. That's a little trick, in case you wanna know. So. In generator. I don't know where that went. Oh, it didn't even go anywhere because I hit a place that's very cluttered. Okay. Um. There was TVs somewhere. Tech. That's it. The interesting thing about these monitors is that I can actually change them up a bit with lighting. So our first order business is to make this black and make this black as well. So we can add lighting to make this. So real quick, I'm going to go to extras. And of course, I can actually add in numbers and letters and stuff if I want to. Um, if I want to go the extra mile, but I can just go to lighting, like invisible, and now I have this light here that I can adjust as I wish. I'm gonna make this a spotlight and try to make it square. <laughs> <clears throat> now the goal is not to make it dynamic because then it, the light will be affected by players my goal is to make it 60 solid okay length get also 60 off ratio type. Now I can add in a filter. So my thing here is I can change it to be any sort of icon, such as UNSC or a turbine. I can use all this stuff to make it work. So now I have a square. And I can adjust this square to fit the screen. Now I can have an animation for it. Like so, go here, and now I can make it a 
anything I want. I'm gonna make it flicker a little bit like a TV. Turn down the rate. And if I really want to, I can do nebula, searchlight, mirror ball. Light bugs, work light. Wait, there we go. I want the galaxy. Now I can change the color. So I'm gonna make this a mint. Now we go in. It's very nice and all, but we need to make it brighter. So let's turn up the brightness to 80. Don't add in a lens flare because that's going to look odd. Now this is what I'm talking about with dynamic lights. If we jump in front of it or anything, then it'll affect the overall light. You don't want that. More specifically, objects will. So we're just going to have a normal light. I'm going to make this a bright. I'm going to make this a brighter blue though. Match. So now we have a now we have a galaxy screen. And now we can add in the fun stuff. Go to extras, details, and we add in letters. Just add in decals. Because obviously, all I think we have access to is A, B, C, and D. <laughs> so. so we're just going to add in the galaxy for now. Now the other TVs can have the same love. We just dupe, move. There. Now we need to resize these because they're clipping out of the screen currently. Can't have that. Perfect. Now we have screens. But real quick, I'm going to change a couple of these to different galaxies. So now we have light bugs. We'll add we'll make one mirror ball. Get red. Okay. That looks great. And now we're gonna make the other one. A Let's make this one UNSC logo. It's already pretty well in there. So I'm gonna make this pure white. There. Perfect. Okay. So that's pretty much all I wanna do in that cafe right now. Like I said, I wanna work on uh, an upper area. So current plan, to lower this so it's not clipping through the ceiling. <laughs> Perfect. Okay. The current plan is have this entire area boxed off and use fire escapes. But that's a little too complex right now. So I'm going to make a billboard. A, a standing billboard sign. So we'll go to props, urban, billboards. We're gonna have the we're gonna have the the warthog billboard currently. Look at that. That's a that's a that's a civvy warthog right there. Oops. 
<clears throat> now the current plan is to make a support here so we can walk across it. That's the plan. So we're going to do that. And of course we'll add in cars later. Just for posterity we'll add in cars. Right now we need to add in structures, platforms. We can have in very thin platforms if we want. Bridges. Railings. No, I want inventory. There we go. So now we just we just try to make this blend in with the billboards. So like so. Now we're just gonna have to do this again on the other side. Link. And we're pretty much almost there anyway, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a guardrail. Go here to railings, railing bar. Uh, I think it can match. Yeah, it's going to match, but I need to make it the right. I need this side facing. This is extremely easy to use. I'm a huge fan, by the way. I am absolutely adoring using Halo 5 Forge. Because it makes my job a lot easier. Okay, now we have a guard railing. So the current plan right now is there are going to be two buildings connected and I'm going to try to sit on top of this. So what's going to happen is I'm going to build this currently floating. There's going to be a pipe that goes all the way downwards, a cylinder, so it looks like a support. I'm going to make it so that you can get across from this building and jump over to an apartment here uh, from a window. And that's basically going to be the build here. Um, I'm going to save real quick, and whoops, there goes my camera. I will be right back. I will be about five minutes.
this is a change. All right, I'm back. Uh, give me another couple minutes, though. So where we were last dealing with, we were working on making this billboard very cleanly. So I'm going to get a pipe, or more specifically, I'm going to go to primitives, cylinders, you get a really high one, you're going to get a half cylinder so it doesn't poke through. Now I'm gonna just set it up in the middle. If I do that, and then we'll poke through. Yep, sure will. We definitely don't want that. That's about as far as I can go. Now obviously, I'm not just going to leave this as it is. Like, this isn't just going to be a square in an area. I'm going to be building a bunch of buildings um, that can't be accessed in here and just make a de and make a uh, make it kind of look like we're in the square of something. And obviously the setting isn't very solid, but I like the idea of it kind of having this very dawn look to it. Even though I can set that in other buildings, this just looks better for me, I guess. I don't know why I'm trying to defend it. Honestly, if I were to switch to a different place, I'd have to start from scratch, because I already have built in here. So, it would just be a bitch. Okay, so now, we're going to set this up to look like a group of the area. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm going to set this up to be yellow, yellow, and we're going to turn this to metal with a shellac overlay, and we're going to turn this into a very metal piece. <clears throat> Now we're going to make a guardrail around here, as well as putting a guardrail on this side here. So I'm going to grab this, and up here. Now the object isn't to eliminate the need to go here, because you can obviously clamber over, or if you're a really good jumper, you can just jump over with these. So. Again, my playlist isn't very long, so. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna do structures, railings.
There we go. Now we can just put a side railing there. A very thin rail. So it just looks like... So we can pretend it's a drop down. Too bad. I'm gonna have to drop this down though. So I'm pretty sure I need this to be blending in a bit. So I need 328. Negative 328. That's not it. Z coordinates. So two twenty seven nineteen. Okay. And if I move this a little bit like that so it blends in. I now have a walk down. Cool. That gives me an idea too. This is all about adding to your creativity, not about taking away from your situation. It's about figuring out what works for what you want to make. So it's not all about making the best thing in the world. It's about making what you think is awesome and exciting to play in. about making what you want to make. You aren't restricted to what the game is telling you. It's all about fluidity and what you want to do with your level. You don't have to do what I'm doing. You can make whatever you want that makes you happy because it's all about what the game lets you do. There's a ton of creativity to be had in games like this. So make what you want without listening to me. Make what you think is interesting to you. And then make it better. That looks fantastic. But there's one thing that bothers me. The lighting in this level isn't really emphasizing the look of this because of the way that it looks. It looks like dawn. So I'm going to add in some extra lights. construction lights I believe I need um yeah that should do it yeah we're gonna have to make these real intense but we can make this work I think we should be fine with six or so yeah that should do oops okay let's make these phased as well
we'll start adjusting the lights once we are done with setting up the lights. You don't have to worry about setting them up individually. We'll get to that in a moment. We can do seven, I believe. Six is a fair thing, but we definitely want to get that full light look. So I'm actually going to cheat a little. Put one in there. Okay, so now we have these seven... Now we have these lovely lights setting up. Now then, we're actually going to bring up this one just a touch, because of how the others are. Now we're going to select, select, select all of these. And now we're going to do going to add in a point light. So, let's look at the spotlight. Now look at the point light. It's lighting up everything now. We're going to increase the length of it to 60. And see how it's affecting the rest of the area. See that lovely glow at the bottom? That's what we want. Now we're going to increase the angle. Fall off ratio is going to be 40. Brightness is going to be 70. There we go. That's what I like to see. And then we're going to add in a color. Light rays. Uh, that doesn't look quite right. We're going to decrease these a lot. these all manually? Can I group these, actually? Yes. Okay. Now, with all that out of the way, we're going to set these up proper. Because remember, they aren't at the floor like they usually are. They're usually on top of the sign. Just so. Okay, now we can use spotlights. I should do.
then we're going to add in a we're going to add in a cone obviously it does obviously a cloudy cone going to decrease the length here and then we're going to turn down the brightness there we go now we have some special lights but we need to add in let's see here where is it dynamic own robo animation i need lens flare there we go i'm gonna turn on a small star Now we have lights. The only problem is that we need to adjust the brightness. And we also need to make them go lower because that isn't light. That's the light. Let's increase the brightness. And then we got to make the angle 70 stuff like that and then we're gonna turn these up so they're more like that there we go and that's how you do it now we can actually do a lot of stuff with this kind of with this kind of detail we can make because we're still pretty good on light map currently. so <clears throat> this is also effects based so we don't have to worry about it Anyways, we can add in more effects, more lighting effects, I should say. If we go to effects, glows, is it? there it is. We can add in some red glow, and we can decrease the intensity, I believe. We can make this a very interesting detail here. We just need to find the right one. Because we don't want a big one, we want a tiny one. Like so. Then we can add these glows to the truck. So, like they're caution lights. Now obviously we need to make these, oops. We need to make this phased. I need to make these phase now. <laughs> okay. So now we're actually putting some life into these vehicles. Now the, now, the good thing to do is actually make sure that there are multiple paths to where you can go. So, we don't currently have a route up to the top of this roof at the moment, but we're going to change that, because we can add in cars. This is also shorter than this, so we can don't have to worry about putting in large trucks. So, props, urban, get a car, or a van. a phase and make this a black man with black detail and gray tires. Now we have a stepping stone. 
now we just have to make it look natural. So, we're going to put one right here. And we're also going to put one down here. We can change the colors a bit. Actually, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do this one in pure white. Or red, actually. Okay, so now there are two different types of ants. Okay, now I'm going to add in a car. Urban. Just a car. Nice Civ Hog. You can use all of these for ways up. Minus the bump. So we have tons of life in this area now. We started off with just the building, and now look at what we have. We currently have the semblances of what was a town that used to have people living in. And that's the beauty of what we're building right now. It might not be pretty at the moment, but there is the semblance of something here, which is what makes it all the more exciting. So we haven't fully fleshed out the cafe yet, but we don't really need to in the act in the basis of just making a map for Halo. We don't need to make a perfect map. We just need to make a map that's fun. Um. <clears throat> Scratch some details here and there, and of course we can add in some weapons later. But right now, our current plan is to make a building. So, we don't have a whole lot of room because of the truck. We can fix that, though. Because, again, we are making a building here. So, we're gonna make... So we're gonna get some walls, 24 by 24. Simple walls, of course. We're going to put these here. going to be a bit of a long building. But that should be fine. We're just going to put these over here. like that, we now have the basis of the building. I have a couple bumps and scratches here. Now again, we're not going to be using the entire building here. We're only going to be having access to the upper floor, which is all that matters currently. 
Now again, we're going to flip this 90 degrees. Mind the iffy look to it, because we are going to make this perfectly flat. Now again, because of the baked lights, we're actually able to do this properly. If I just grab these lights here and increase their degree to a 90 degree, it now looks like a natural light. Increase the, decrease the fallout ratio, decrease the brightness, because these aren't high beams. And we're going to just turn this down until the falloff looks more like a natural light. I'm going to turn this to 30. There we go. Now that looks like a more natural light. Now again, we're going to just be turning this into a floor. So we're going to get a simple wall. Because all we need is a wall. Nothing fancy. And now we will proceed to build the floor. Now we can magically snap some stuff together, adjust as necessary, make it look beautiful. Again, it doesn't matter. If it matches perfectly the first try, you can always come back to it later. As long as it works first try, then you can test and then you can adjust. So right now it's not the prettiest looking thing in the world. But obviously things are going to change very quickly. Now then, we're going to turn this into pure white. And then we're gonna take this pure white as well and turn it into punk. We're gonna turn it into a wood floor. No, actually. Yeah, we are. And then make this into ceilings and roof. And pathways. Turn down the mat. Actually, turn up the mat. There we go. Now, here comes that little trick I told you about earlier. get rid of that clipping. I'm just going to keep adjusting little by little until that clipping is gone. Okay, now I'm going to raise this up one. Are these moving it left and right? That's not right. There we go. Right. Okay. Now let's begin one small adjustment here. Because this is not even. Wood floor. Okay. Now let's take our walls here. Just build up. Like that. can group this now because I now have a second story building and group 
now I can build up. So now we have what looks like a very solid building. Of course, we'll have to iron it out a bit. But all we need to do is just move it down a touch. And it'll look solid. But there is one problem here. We need to remove one more. Group. Delete. So now we have a full entrance. Now we're going to need to delete another wall. Delete. Delete. So now we have access to the second story. Obviously, this can't fly too well, so we're going to group this up as well. Group and dupe. And we're going to move this floor in, move it up, so that now it's not just looking like a spire tower, it now just looks like part of an apartment. Let's get rid of all the clashing here. There. Now it just looks like a straight room. Now we're going to decorate this room a bit before we close in the walls. Props, tech, television. And we're going to look for satellites. Nope. Back to props. Uh, bodies. Now we're adding in humans. Human bodies. Nope, that's not right. There we go. Guy died doing what he loved, watching TV. You want your levels to tell a story. You don't want them to just be plain, uninteresting, sad. So we're going to add in a story to this building. I believe I need... Nope, I don't want St. Ellie. Is there a blood decal in here? Trash, caution, locations. Sangeli. Yeah, that's fine. We're also going to add in some effects then. Sparks. A burst of blue sparks just here on the TV. You'll notice that this also adds in a bit of lighting, which is very nice. And of course, we can add in a little bit more, add in a tiny amount of smoke. So now it looks natural. Um, we're also going to add some embers. Perhaps of a nearby fire that's happening downstairs. Because it can seep through the floor. Or upstairs, actually. To make it look like there's a fire going on in the building. blend in with the actual smoke as well. OK. 
I said, everything can tell a story. You just have to make it your story. So, with those decals, I actually have an idea. Sangeli. Extras, decals, Sangeli. Let's do a... Let's do a profit hieroglyph. Okay, now we're gonna make this... Let's see here. I guess it's only in yellow. It makes sense. I'm gonna do the ring here as well. Now let's actually finish up what we started in here. Structures, walls, we're gonna make very thin walls here. Very thin high walls. We need high walls, not that thin. There we go. I don't want the detail either. Actually, need the 32. 24, so. Are so good. Just for a minute, I need some privacy. Okay. Now let's flip these 90 degrees so they match. Oh, I want this one. There we go. Okay, now let's get a simple wall here. Right, should be able to just jump in. Nope. So that's why you test. Let's lift up this one a bit. Let's raise this up. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect cleaning. Perfect clearing too. That's what I want to see.
there. Cool. Now let's just move this down a bit. I actually need to move this this way. Oops, that's not right. That is a bit crooked. Perfect. this. Okay. Now let's add in a container. Should be some containers in here. Go to props. Uh, cargo. Crates. First time we're gonna add a weapon. We go to gameplay weapons. So this is where power weapons are. We're gonna get a sniper rifle. Now we're just going to rotate this way, this way, this way, so that it looks like this man. Stole some UNSC weaponry. And now we can actually add in some details, such as extra ammo, which we only want one of, so it'll have eight bullets in it. Okay. Now then, let's proceed to recolor everything here. add in another billboard. They're too big. Never mind. We're going to add in some fake windows now. Stuff that just blends in naturally, of course. So that this doesn't just look like a giant spire. Okay, now I'm just gonna build this up a bit. There we go. There we go. Okay, now I just gotta do the same over here.
We don't have to worry about putting windows on this side, by the way. Because that's not going to be visible to players, typically. Just jump on top of that. Cool. There we go. Now that looks like a building. How about that? Alright. Pretty happy with what I see here. Okay, I'm gonna set the world real quick. None. No fog, no distance fog. Set that to zero. Actually, no, I do want thickness. Because <laughs> that looks pretty sick. Amazing how much a little bit of lighting can do. Okay, let's actually... Yeah, I actually really like how this is looking. How about that? Look at this. Obviously, I have to do the rest, but right now, this is looking pretty good. Alright. I print screen this. I'll find out. So far, looking real good. Okay, save map as nightlife. Obviously, there's a lot of work to be done, but we have been streaming for about two and a half hours. So, as it stands right now, the first, I'd say, maybe third of this game is done. A third of this map is done. I uh, just got to make sure that everything is looking good for effect. But yeah, currently, I'm liking where this is going. Alright. That's enough for now. We're going to save the map. And that's it for now. We'll come back and finish this later, of course. But thank you all for coming. So far, we're looking real good on this. Okay. Let's turn off the music real quick. Now, obviously, if we go into the customs browser, we'll find some people playing games right now. And uh, we'll, we'll see exactly what we're talking about here when it comes to map design. So I'm gonna, we're gonna play, we're gonna play on the rig real quick and see what happens. Yeah, we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna play an actual game. Finish off the day here. Hopefully, I can join games. That game just closed. Join game. Yeah. There we go. OK. 
Okay. So, who's ready for Halo? I guess we'll see if I can actually stream this or not. Slayer! Let's see what you can do. Yep. <clears throat> Let's see what we got here. Play free for all, so this is news to me. You turned on my sensitivity a bit. Killing it. Not like that button. Ten seconds to sniper rifle. Snipers up. And everybody wants that sniper rifle.
mess today. Perfect kill. That's a double. This is not meant for 12 people. That is not meant for 12 people. Five minutes left. Lord. This is not meant for 12 people. This is a 4v4 map. We're doing a 12 player free for all on it. This was never going to end well. Okay. <laughs> sure.
Yep. Two minute warning. We got one minute left. Oh! Tell me that was on purpose. Uh oh. That's a double. <laughs> tell me that was on purpose. Yeah, sure. It, it, sure. Go for it, Buck. Leave what you will. Over, got break. That's a defeat. Oh well, fourth place isn't too bad. <sighs> Triple double. Okay. Well, that's enough for me. We'll be back. Tomorrow? Tomorrow-ish for another build, I suppose. We'll continue building what we made. Be back to it. Yeah. Uh, see you guys tomorrow.